What if you have a local area network, but you don't happen to be local to that network? What if you are traveling? What if you're off site? What if you're at a coffee shop, but you still would like access to all of the things that you have at your local network? Well, it's difficult if you're on the internet, because as we know, the internet is a very public place. You may be on a wireless network and you don't want people who are on that wireless network or on that public internet connection to see your private communication going back to your local area network at work. So one of the things that we can implement is something called virtual private networking. I could become a member of my corporate network by creating what we call a tunnel from my machine that tunnels in through this encrypted secret tunnel all the way back to my local office. And even if somebody was to intercept the communication out to my local office, it's all encrypted. You wouldn't be able to make hide or hair of it. It makes complete gobbledygook sense to anyone else looking at it. The way this works is on our computer, we set up an encrypted tunnel to what is usually referred to as a VPN concentrator or virtual private networking concentrator. It is a front end that many people could communicate directly into this machine. And it, it is in responsible for making sure that you're using the right credentials. It really is you communicating in. Give me a username and password. You must, you must give me the right authentication to be able to pass this point. It also is in charge of decrypting the traffic so that on the inside of your network, that traffic is all what we call in the clear. It's not encrypted anymore. Otherwise, all of the servers and printers and other devices inside your network wouldn't know what to do with it if it was all encrypted. So once you get to this endpoint, this outside point of the VPN concentrator, from this side inside, you're, it's like you're on your local network. But everybody else on the outside just sees encrypted traffic. And that's the beauty of creating that virtual private network. You have all of the power of being on site and on your local area network, except you're located very, very far away. VPN concentrators are really just the beginning of the different devices that we have on our networks. Let's learn about some other devices you might run into that you may find on your local network in a home office or in some enterprise networks. When we first started doing Ethernet networks, we started using hubs to be able to communicate. If you're familiar with the OSI layers of these different devices, we don't go into much of OSI layers in the a certification, but you may hear it referred to this way. Hubs are essentially multi-port repeaters, which means if we send traffic into one of these ports, the job of this hub is pretty simple. It just retransmits that data out every other port that's on this hub. And so all of these devices can communicate to each other because it's not really doing much intelligence there. It's taking whatever we give in one side and spitting it out all the other ports on the other side. If this was a 32 port hub, we would put it in one port and it would transmit that data out the other 31 ports on that device. So these very large hubs, you can imagine, there's a lot of communication going back and forth. Not really intelligent in the way that it works, but that's what we had when we started doing networking. It was centralized. We could connect, connect everybody up to one device and they could all communicate to each other. But as the speeds got faster, we soon realized that having this sent to every port on the network be created a lot of inefficiencies and the speed really decreased. We really only saw these, in fact, on 10 megabit per second networks and 100 megabit per second networks. And although there was a specification built for this half duplex hub type communication for gig, nobody ever created a gigabit hub. That's how inefficient it was. We never wanted to do that. We wanted to use a different technology. In fact, we really don't find hubs very much these days. If you find one, it's on eBay. You can't buy them in stores. Uh, they do become pretty important if you're going to tap into a connection, but otherwise not much use for them for the networking that we do today. These days, we do everything with switches. This is the grown-up version of a hub because it decides where to send traffic intelligently in the hardware. It's a natural evolution of our technology. It uses something called ASICs, and that stands for Application Specific Integrated Circuits. We hardly ever use that big long term. We just call them these ASICs. They use these chips. And in this hardware, we're able to quickly switch from one port to another. If I'm on port one and I need to communicate with a device on port five, I don't send traffic to everybody on the network. This switch knows that I should send the traffic just to that device on port five. This is a OSI layer two device. So this isn't doing much more intelligence other than knowing where the other machines are 
and passing the traffic on its way. In networking terms, it's a very fast device, but it's not very intelligent in how it works. But we can have a lot of ports on this device. Because I'm not retransmitting the traffic out every other port on the device, I can now scale these networks to be very, very large. And if I'm communicating out to one port to a device way over here, it only sends that one stream of traffic. And at the same time, a port here could, could be communicating here, and a port on this device could be communicating up to the other port on this device. And so you can create these multiple lanes of traffic back and forth, which is a very, very efficient way to communicate. So I can get really high bandwidths here. I can have many packets going across these devices simultaneously. And if you look in any modern network, you're going to have switches everywhere. And they're in our homes, our home offices, our small offices, and enterprise networks like this enterprise switch. That's what we use today to communicate back and forth between all of these local devices is we're using these enterprise switches. If you ever need to communicate outside of your local subnet, you're going to need a router. And a router, is that's all its job does, is communicate between IP subnets. We refer to this uh, sometimes as a Layer 3 switch. Not really an accurate term, but this works at Layer 3. A Layer 3 switch and a route is exactly the same thing. So don't be confused if somebody uses that term. Occasionally, a switch may have the capabilities in it to also do routing. And that's how that term came about, is that it is a layer three switch. But it's what ultimately, it's really being a router. So whenever we talk about those terms, if it's working at layer two, it is a switch. If it is working at layer three, it is a router. Those two terms are not interchangeable. That's really how we define those in our industry. Most often, we're connecting very diverse networks here. We're connecting WAN connections to this. We're connecting fiber connections to this. There may be customized copper type connections. And our router is able to translate between all of those different topology types and send the TCP IP traffic from one port to another. You most often see this on the edge of a network, or it's connecting in other diverse networks. Also, we can communicate back and forth over a short distance or even over those long wide area network distances. Let's see what we can remember of these network technologies. Our first question is, what kind of Windows networking is usually configured at large enterprise networks? If you remember, there was a couple of different kinds. There was a work group, and then there was also a Windows domain. Our second question, what networking technology can encrypt data across public networks and decrypt the data once it gets to our inside trusted network? Well, if you recall, it was a virtual private network, a VPN that allowed us to encrypt the data and on the inside have it in the clear so we can talk to our local devices. And our last question, what networking component is designed to transmit high-speed data on local area networks at OSI layer 2? That is that MAC address layer, and that is a networking switch. Well, that covers what we need to know for our CompTIA A plus 220701 section 4.1, where we've learned about the technologies and bandwidths and duplexes and devices. There's a lot to this networking piece. But hopefully, this is now giving you some fundamentals that you can use to apply to the rest of the pieces of not only your A plus exam, but maybe later on, you'll apply it to your network plus exam. And this networking piece is so fundamental, you'll end up using it anywhere you go for whatever technology you happen to get into. If you'd like to see any of our other A plus videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards or send me a message, you can visit us online at freeaplus.com. <laughs>